Hey, everybody. Yolanda Abregati. I am the president of WIN Cleveland. WIN stands for Women in Networking Cleveland. And I am really excited for you to hear the conversation that I'm having today with Cynthia and Jan. So Cynthia, if you would just give us a little introduction before you talk about the Haven Home. Tell us who you are and a little bit about how you came to be where you are right now. Okay, great. So my name is Cynthia Rios. I'm the executive director of the Haven Home. And I got involved with the Haven when actually before it actually opened. <laughs> so the, the building is a former convent on the campus of Elizabeth Baptist Church and um, Family Promise had been using it as a remote site while they did some capital improvements to their building. And then that ended and the building was vacant. And so the pastor, uh, that's also my church too, had asked me if I would work to try to start some type of shelter program for women uh, with homeless women and children. And right about the same time, the county approached us and said, hey, we know you have an empty building. We have a crisis of families who need shelter. Would you consider becoming the overflow? And so that made my job easy because yes, now I've accomplished it. <laughs> and, and so we all worked together to open the facility in November, 2017. So we're excited to be, yeah, celebrating our five-year anniversary this coming November. Happy anniversary. Wow, you've done a lot in five years. That's great. Yes, we have. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll get back to that. Jan, I have to have you as well. Go ahead and introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your exciting book, and then we'll get into uh, the, the reason we're together today. Okay, and really the book and Haven Home kind of work together, so it's really kind of great. I'm Jan Litterist. I joined WIN in the spring of 2021. I wasn't looking for anything in particular at that point, but I was going through a rebranding of my business, and everything in my life is done now to find joy. Sometimes that joy finds us without us looking for it. I had been encouraged for many years to join WIN, and that was not a possibility. I lived in Oberlin, Ohio before I moved to Solon. So in the fall of 2021, innocently sitting on a Zoom meeting where the chairman of the charity for 2021 said, we're looking for a chairman for next year. And as happens with me many times, I went, I'll do it. And um, there were a couple of conditions and we talked about it, but that day I made the commitment that if it went through the way that they thought it would be and the Haven Home would be the charity for 2022. So I joined and I went through the transition and I'm chairing the committee and I have five wonderful women who have been involved with the previous charity, which is fantastic. And we have had two meetings so far. We've accomplished a lot for what we want to do. We sat with Cindy and with Alexis, their development director, and said, what do you want us to do? Because it's not our mission, it's their mission, and they are allowing us to participate. I love was, that. Yes, I it, love that. It was a great meeting and it was very clear that what they really needed, these women and their families were staying there, hopefully short term until housing of some sort was available to them. And one of the things that I took away from that first meeting was that we want women, no matter where they are in their lives, to have dignity and pride. And what Cindy brought up was something I hadn't thought about before, Rolling suitcases. I mean, when you see somebody walking down the street to catch a bus or whatever with a garbage bag, your brain goes, they must not have a home. Mm -hmm. And so that's the major, one of the major things we want to accomplish. And we've already started that, Cindy, because on Friday, I picked up four plus rolling suitcases. Awesome. Great. Some smaller from one of our drop-off points from Byright, from Michelle Rib, and also some backpacks that mm -hmm. were there mm -hmm. from a previous thing she had been involved in. So we've got it started. We've got a lot of ideas coming, but the other major item all year 
are baby diapers, large size baby diapers. And I purchased my first pack to put in the suitcases at our event on January 24th as a display. Posters are being made for all the drop-off points and quarterly we will be changing what we are going to focus on. That is all in place. I'm not going to share it now because we're not gonna give it away. But a lot of it's seasonal and very well thought out by Cindy and Alexis at the Haven Home. So we are here to do whatever we can to make the women who reside at the Haven Home at any time this year, maybe into the future, if we have enough suitcases, to have the pride and dignity as they celebrate their moving forward. That's what we're doing. I love it. So before I, I get back to you, Cindy, I wanna just say, I appreciate uh, you, Jan, because my goal when I came on last year as president was to make us be more conscious of what we're doing when we're giving. We're not just throwing money at something. We're actually impacting real women's lives. And I wanted our community to have the feeling of what that's like. And so I'm excited for what you guys are doing. So Cindy, go ahead and tell us about the Haven Home and tell us about your mission and how things are going. Yeah, so, so thank you, Jan, for telling, saying that so eloquently. So, you know, in a, in a nutshell, you know, our mission statement is compassionately serving um, under-resourced women and their children by empowering sustainable independence. So that, that's the mission statement. How do we do that? We do it by providing emergency shelter. We do it by providing asset building programs for the women in the shelter. And then we also have a community outreach initiative, which reaches the, the women and children who may be housed or may be doubled up may just be going through a difficult time. And that's where diapers and providing some toiletries, hygiene products for women who either um, are at risk of homelessness or living in poverty, um, really anywhere in Cuyahoga County. And, and, and Jan, you really put into words, you know, what, how we feel about what we do. Like it's all about giving them dignity. And if you think about, like she mentioned, you know, a woman, comes into the shelter and sometimes everything she owns is in three black garbage bags, you know, or it's all in her car in um, laundry baskets and reusable bags and things like that. And so when she leaves, we always, you know, it, it's to have her in a better place emotionally, psychologically. And so putting all of her stuff in a suitcase to get into a cab or, you know, a transportation to get to whatever the next destination is, you know, just makes them feel so much better. And when we have ones for the kids and, um, you know, they, they're just so thrilled and grateful that that's, that's a step for them. Like, I, you know, all my stuff was in a garbage bag yesterday, but today I've got suitcases and, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I feel now like I'm part of society and people aren't staring at me and my kids. And, and so that's a big part of what we do. You know, the, the programming that we offer um, we're going to be starting parenting classes soon, which is um, something I've been working on for quite some time. We have a support group for the women. Uh, we also have um, art therapy for the kids. We have um, just lots of fun activities too in the holidays. We do some arts and crafts. We have a birthday celebration once a month. Um, we have activities and opportunities also for, for moms and kids to earn gift cards. So we might have a healthy eating poster contest. Contest. We had that last year. Um, we might have um, the clean room contest. <laughs> and, you know, like we, our cleaning staff goes through and they see that somebody's room is really super clean. And they let me know the room number and I slip a gift card under the door. You know, just positive incentives all along the way. It's all about making them feel better. Um, you know, there's, there's rules in place, but we don't have to be defined by that. Like we can, we can have fun, we can encourage, we can empower. Um, in, in any way that, you know, that works, that's what we want to do. I love Cindy what you said about, um, well, the dignity part, but I, the extension of that is when you have a suitcase, it makes you feel like you're worth something. Mm -hmm. In a garbage bag, you're going to be feeling like you're garbage. That yep. step up that you provide, it, it's a mindset, right? Mm -hmm. It's yep. the beginning of that change of understanding 
Yes, you are worthy. Yes, you deserve better. Just because you're experiencing this temporary thing mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you're not worth it. And I, I love that. I, I love that. And I love that that is your mission. That compassion mm-hmm. part of it is, is absolutely fabulous. So what do you want our community to know about um, the, the, the women that you provide for? Or how can we um, more connect with what you want from us as a community? I think we all have to realize that we're, we're just a couple paychecks away <laughs> from being where where they okay. are. Okay, <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> talk about learned, that. Yeah, if we've learned nothing over the last couple of years. It's yes. been that you know, it doesn't take much for us to need help in whatever mm-hmm. form that may be, mm-hmm. and it may be that hey, I don't have diapers this month, or you know, my, my WIC card doesn't come. And I, so I need some baby food. I, you know, I need some formula. So, Mm. you know, it can happen to any of us and it's not because they don't want to work. It's not because they have too many children. It's, it's not because of that. It's because of poverty. Mm. You know, it's because of systemic racism. It's because of domestic violence. I mean, there's lots of reasons and it's rarely because they don't want to work you know and and that's what a lot of people tend to think like well why don't they just go get a job (laughs) and and you know I want to say that it's not easy to just go get a job when you're living in a shelter and you don't have a permanent address or maybe you don't have a cell phone or just all the other barriers in place it's really hard for them right now just trying to get you know the SNAP benefits or you know trying to communicate mm-hmm. with social service agencies, it's difficult. Now, it was difficult before. It's really hard now when you can't make an appointment to go into an office and see a caseworker or see somebody who can help you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, I love I love that you talked about that. And I know, Jan, this is a passion of yours, having women understand financially that, first of all, that mindset, and then understanding they can manage, they can master these things. Um, you talked about providing some financial uh, training or um, I, I forget how you worded it. Will you talk about what you're doing in terms of helping prepare them? You did talk about parenting classes, but I thought there was something in the middle there. Yeah, so, so we do, um, we have a support group and we have a, a number of different volunteers that come in that will teach uh, like financial literacy, budgeting on a small amount. Like we can budget, but if you only get $700 a month, that's a different kind of budget, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So we wanna make sure people doing that are sensitive to their situations. Um, we have someone that comes in and talks to them about getting their GED. So we try to look at what are all these obstacles to moving forward. The support groups help with self-esteem and building relationships, boundaries, things like that. Um, you know, And then the other groups help with the, the, the other skills, You know, writing a resume, um, getting a job, keeping a job, and then, then when you do, what do you do with the money that you've earned? And then, you know, then there's an opportunity to talk to people about housing. So we also, we never want to forget that housing is a key component to all of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Dan, jump in here, um, share with us what your vision is as you move forward with the, uh, the committee. I know you don't want to spill the beans about some of the things that you have going, but are there things you need? Do you need another location site for drop off or some of the things that that you're planning? Um, Well, we already have three drop off sites. Okay. Um, And the third one came from one of our committee members. So that's perfect. And Alexis has offered to pick up all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think three is adequate. Energy is a big thing of mine, and we'll talk about the book in one minute because I didn't ignore your question, but the bottom line is there are things that are so parallel with the Haven Home with what I've been doing in writing my book, Set This Butterfly Free. But we've got the energy, which is major, in this committee to drive the win participants. Mm -hmm. And I say participants because every member and beyond win can be full of energy for this purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we already have the committee energized. I mean, excited. (laughs) And that is great. And I run another networking group 
Professional Women's Connection, which we consolidated three groups into one. And we meet tomorrow. And when will be a topic in regards to the Haven Home? Because 26 women who are gathering, hopefully, if we don't have a flood and the creek doesn't rise and all of those things, um, will be there tomorrow as a captive audience as I present my word for the year, which is empowering. So thank you, Cindy, for bringing that right. up because there are similar words, mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one who believes in budgeting. I believe in a spending plan. We're <laughs> at a different point than where most of the women you work with regularly might be, but they might be ready depending on how many women you have leaving each year, I personally, if it's appropriate, will give them one of my books to take with them as a going away present. So Ken, Thank you. I, 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 I got to stop you because uh, you and I, we, our minds think very much alike. So in, in many ways, when you change that word, it changes the perspective, right? Which word are you speaking of? Budget. When okay, you say I don't budget, use budget. Okay. Yeah, so, so when I hear budget, I think what I cannot spend, and that's a negative sort what of- What you have to do. But when I think a spending plan, then I think okay. this is what I'm spending, which is a more positive way of looking at it. But it's also realistic. It's yes. not idealistic. It's how much money do you have? Yes. And Cindy, someday we'll talk about how I got my company started. Yeah, There's definitely. a story there. And if I'd we have time, Yolanda, you're directing this. We'll let you say, talk about that story. Otherwise, we'll talk about it at a different time because Empower Excellence is the name of my company. And when it became a vehicle, everything happens in the time it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. I was changing my lifestyle, becoming more energetic because of the book, because the subtitle is transforming your energy, your money, and your life, because mm -hmm. they're all connected. So yes, with all of that, what the Haven Home is doing is an extension of a meeting I had 10 years ago with women who were leaving shelters who were going into transitional housing, who were being told they had no money because it wasn't their money. Mm. And that's not true. Mm. Whatever the money is that you have, you have the ability to say how it's going to be spent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Yolanda, thank you for that because it's very much mindset. And when I was in financial planning, I stopped using the word budget. Mm -hmm. Budget became the B word in my practice. <laughs> People would walk in and go, we're not going to talk about the B word, are we? <laughs> no, we're not. Okay. Because when you tell somebody they have to budget, if they're on a limited budget, they do what they need to do to take care of themselves, to sustain themselves. When they might have enough money to meet their basic needs, and that's more the case than most people think, then it's easier to say, here's where I spend my money. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have the deluxe cable. Maybe I shouldn't shop at the most expensive store in town. If I need something, then I can control what I spend. When you're budgeting, sometimes you have to budget. But as you move forward in your life, and moving forward is a big concept for me. Mm -hmm. And that's what these women are doing. They don't want to be there for two years, okay? Right. And I think that, that's the, the, the exciting thing about um, what I've learned about the Haven Home. So we've talked about um, the needs of, of the, the women and the, the children who are there and how we can help you with that. We talked about the projects that you're um, working on to help them where they are and then to help them move to that next place. Is there anything else that, that you want to share with us, Cindy, about the Haven Home? Well, I think, you know, I would just, you know, like to share that we've had just 
an opportunity to meet some amazing women there that have undergone such trauma in their lives and, you know, and they've overcome it. And, you know, and, and when Jan came in, I, we probably could have talked all day if we'd had the time, you know, there was such synergy there and mm -hmm. just, you know, the back and forth. And, and I think, you know, like, like Jan, I feel everything happens for a reason. And I think this is just an opportunity to really make an impact on someone's life. And, you know, we don't have to serve 500 people to be valuable, but if we can impact a few women and it, cause it's generational, you know, it's mm -hmm. an, it's an inter a two generation model because there's a mom and there's a family. And if we can help the kids, it helps mom. If we help mom, it helps the kids. And, and I, you know, I just, you know, want to say that we do good work. I mean, I'm really proud of what we do at the Haven Home. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm proud of what we do there. We do mm -hmm. good work and we help people. And I, and I just want people to feel confident knowing that the support that they give us is, is put to good use. Cindy, can I ask you for one thing? Mm -hmm. On Monday, the 24th, the week from today, I'm doing a presentation mm -hmm. on my book. Yes, which I'm is not going to talk ad infinitum <laughs> about my book. It's going to talk about why the book, okay? Mm -hmm. But I intend to finish my talk leading them into win and directing them to the mini display of suitcases mm -hmm. and some potential surprises, which might be a fundraiser, but Michelle's working on that and I'm not giving that away right now, okay? <laughs> uh, my idea went to Michelle. Michelle said, let's take it one step further. You have to be there to see it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and it may not happen, but it may. But if you could give us one inspiring, energizing, empowering line to give the women of win, that even if you send it to me in writing, so I get it to be in your words, mm -hmm. that we could share with them, that I will print up to have for the people who are there and will share with the people who attend virtually. Because the words of someone like you, some members may know you. I didn't know you until we met. Mm -hmm. You met Yolanda today. So, I mean, there can be many people who have never had a conversation with you or talked about the Haven Home. Do you have something? If you want to give it to me now, I'll be more than happy to take it a one-liner to energize win for 2022? Um, let me send it to you. Okay. <laughs> let me give that some thought. Um, I was waiting with bated breath. I'm like, oh my no. like, you're oh, amazing if you can do that. <laughs> well, and I don't expect her to do it, but it gives a sense of urgency that we do need to have it before. Yeah. No, I, I will. And I, I do. No, and I, I know you will. Yes, because you guys have been very receptive and responsive, and I've kept mm -hmm. Alexis informed of what we're doing. She's mm -hmm. actually getting minutes from my my notes from the meetings. Oh, okay. So awesome. she knows what's Thank going you. on and can share with you. Okay. okay. Yes, that's great. Mm -hmm. I also do want to say too that you know we very much believe, in, and I'm not trying to use your phrase like win-win situations, because you know I had, I had told you know, the staff that if we need something, like if we need a printer, if we need promotional things, if we need some, some product or service, let's look at the WIN membership first and see who in this group does this. Right. You know, we need a photographer. Let's look down this list first because, you know, this is about relationships. Like that's, that's part of what we do. It's all about relationships and we want to support your work too. So, you know, so just wanted you to know that we're looking at both sides of this and we appreciate your support. We, we appreciate that. I personally appreciate that because I believe strongly that it is about community, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I adapt, adopted a phrase um, right in the middle of, of 2020 and it's globally minded, locally focused, right? Mm -hmm. We want to change the world. We have to start right here where we are, which is why it's so valuable to have win be in my life because that's what we are. We are local women helping local women network, learn and thrive. And so it is, it is a community. And, and I, I feel like our community needs to know 
that we're helping our overall community of women in Cleveland mm -hmm. live yes. better, be better, do better. And I, I really am thankful to have this opportunity to pour into you. So we appreciate yeah, that thank you. community thing. Thank you. Yeah, we, we appreciate um, all the support and the relationships that we're building with this. Like Jan, you're stuck with us. I don't know. I'm not stuck. I'm not stuck anywhere because I have belonged to other networking groups. But when I put the criteria into play this summer and seriously looked at my business, seriously looked at my personal life and what was important to me, there are there's a list which I'm not going to bore you with because this is not about me, but if it doesn't bring joy to my life mm -hmm. and what I do every day is helping women with their financial relationships, their money relationships. I don't consider it coaching. I, I consider it to be influencing them for the power they already have within them mm -hmm. to energize them to do what they are capable of doing. Mm -hmm. and thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your time. Um, we are recording this community on, on a blizzard day. It's yes. about 10 feet of snow in Aurora. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, actually, not that much. About, well, it looks like about 10 inches or so, but mm -hmm. it's nice to have Zoom, right? Yes. No, Yay. They're home. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. And I really thank appreciate you, both. you and what you're doing. And Cindy, I'm sure we'll be connecting and, and revisiting this conversation throughout the year. So um, I'll reach out to you or have Jan reach out to you again. And Jan, thank you so much. I love thank your- Thank you both for the opportunity. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. All right, thank you everyone.